Hi, I'm David I, and welcome to this preview of the new Rad Studio XE. I'm here with Mike Roslog, product manager for Rad Studio. Hi, Mike. Hi, David. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Great. This preview showcases some of the developer and team productivity enhancements added to Rad Studio XE. We'll also take a look at new capabilities and enhancements in the IDE, tool chain, modeling, and debugging. Now, Mike. One of the development challenges we keep hearing about is, how can I keep my productivity at a maximum while I manage the source code revisions of individual developers as well as teams? I'm glad you asked, David. In the new Rad Studio XE, we've integrated in the Subversion support. So Delphi, C++ Builder, and Delphi Prism all have Subversion integration as part of the product. Let me give you a quick demo of how that works. I'm really excited about the Subversion integration that we've added into Rad Studio XE. What's really great about it is that no matter how we're working with Subversion, Brad Studio understands how to deal with it. What I want to start off with is just a simple project that's already under management of Subversion. Notice here I'm in the Windows Explorer in Windows 7 and I have a couple of projects that are under management. What I want to do is load up this project into Rad Studio and I want to work with it inside of the environment. I double click on it, it automatically loads from behind. I right mouse click on this, I can come into here and I can see that I have Subversion and I can take a look at my repository or show log from the project root and what it'll do is it'll show all the revisions of this project since I actually installed it with all of the comments. I have the ability now to make modifications, I can update it, I can commit it. I have a local repository, I have a local project under management of Subversion, and all I have to do is load it up and the IDE understands how to deal with it and how to work with it. The next thing I want to show you how to do is actually do a brand new project. If I started off with a clean IDE, I come in and say File New Application, and what we've got here is just a simple application, and now I want to put this under management. I'm going to right mouse click on my project number two, and I'm going to say add the subversion. What I have to first do is save this file. I'm going to come in and right mouse click, and we're going to make a directory. We'll call this sexample2. I'll say sexample2, and we'll go ahead and hit enter. And then I will save in sexample2 my projects. And what it's going to do then, it's going to show the, the files that are located. Now notice we have our pass and our DFM, we have our projects and our resource file. The next thing I want to do is find the project that I want to hook it into. We're going to come into here and I'm going to drop down and I have something called Quick Repo and we're going to put this into Project 4. So I can just come in here and hit Project 4 and then I want to go ahead and put a comment in here that says this is my base commit. Once I'm done with the base commit, I can go ahead and hit the import. Once I import it, you'll notice that the message key down at the bottom says the commit was successful. I've now committed this to the process. The next thing I want to do is let's make some changes. I'm going to go ahead and add a button to my form. Well, this is a pretty standard thing we do. Once we have a form, we go ahead and save it, and then we go ahead and customize it afterwards. I'm just going to type in here standard button. So now we've changed the code, and we've also changed the DFM. The next thing I want to do is I want to commit those changes. So I'm going to save it, and that's going to save a local copy to my hard drive, and then I'm also going to go ahead and commit that change back to my repository. So I'm going to come back in and click Subversion and I'm going to say Submit Files in this project. When I click Files in the project, since I dropped the button, as I said before, it's going to update my DFM and my pass file. I add GUI work as my description and save it. Notice down at the bottom, the commit was completed, and now I'm ready to go out and let's look at the history and see what has happened. So when I look at the history, you can see I have my version 9 and I have my version 8. And I can see just by using clicking on version 9 and version 8, I can see the differences between them. So I can revert back or go forward. I can also come out here from an informational standpoint and notice that when I click on 8, it says it's the base project. And when I click on Project 9, it's the GUI work. So I have full interaction from this standpoint from inside of there. Now the next thing I want to do is actually show you how to get to a remote repository. What's interesting is I've shown you how to get to a local repository, and small teams a lot of times will set up a local server or they'll have a shared disk. But sometimes small teams and even large teams have their repositories out on the internet and it allows people to go out on the basically in the cloud and pull down projects and work with those projects. 
I want to pull one of those projects. And it, the great part about this is, is that I pull a project locally or remotely the exact same way. So I come into File, Open File from Version Control. When I come in, I want to go out and get GE Experts, which I think is one of the best plugins for Rad Studio. So I want to open up my area and I'm going to pick on my documents. I'm going to slide down a little bit and look at projects and I'm going to open a new structure and I'm going to call this my GE experts. Once I have that, I'm going to say OK. I'm going to leave it as recursive and I'm going to say I want the current revision. When I'm done, I hit the OK button. What this will do is this will go out and remote connect to that repository and it will start downloading the files. Now there are about 566 files that have to be downloaded from the internet into my localized managed directory. And when this is done, it's going to ask me which project that I actually want to load. I'm now going to pick GE Experts Rad Studio 2010 version and I'm going to say OK. It doesn't find the resource file, which is fine, and I'm going to say OK again. Then I'm going to say OK. And I, when I bring in my project, you'll notice that I have my project set up here. And I can go into Backup Project. I can open this up. And you can see that we have the GX backup. And if I open this up, you'll see that here's the form. If I go into my history, I have that same structure again. I can go into information. And what it's doing, it's going out and trying to find all the differences uh, for each one of the revisions that's been put out for GE experts. The next thing I can do is go into differences. And if I want to, I can pick something like 542 right here. And I can pick 536, and you'll notice when I pick 536, it'll actually show the differences just like it did with the local revision. Whether it's local or whether it's remote, inside of Rad Studio, it makes it really, really simple. The next thing I want to show you is inside of Delphi Prism XE, we also have Subversion support built into it. So if I want, I can have a project just like I have, and I can right mouse click, and just like in Rad Studio, we have our Subversion, and this project's already under management so I can update it, I can commit it, or I can go into the subversion and I can do branches, switches, and merges. I can do all of the subversion things that you would expect to do. So now inside of Rad Studio XE, subversion, a great thing, it's a great integration and it's going to really help you get your job done better and make sure that you're safe when you're doing it. Mike. What else do you have to help developers with their source code changes? Well, one of the other things, we have a lot of new tools integrated into Rad Studio. One of them is the Beyond Compare Differ, and that allows me to compare files and their structures. Let me show you a quick demo of that. One of the great things about having Beyond Compare integrated into the Rad Studio environment is that it really gives you a rich interface for comparing files and understanding the differences that happen between versions of files. So what I'm going to do is show you a quick example of how you can use this. I've got uh, version 9 and I've got version 8, and what I'm going to do is come up and select Beyond Compare to use as my difference engine. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. When it comes up, you'll see that I have a complete environment now just built for figuring out what's different between one file and the other, and it really gives me a lot of key capabilities to be able to merge structures and to take structures away. So in other words, if I wanted to add button over to this version, I could just click on the arrow. If I wanted to put the space over where the button 1 is, I could just hit the arrow back over. So it gives me a really quick and easy way to handle differences in files, and it gives me a different way of looking at it. And I think it's really exciting to have this type of integration inside of the product. Developer productivity has always been at the forefront of everything that we do in our products. And today, developers are being asked to build even more software in even shorter periods of time. So Mike, What's new in Rad Studio XE that will help developers be more productive? Well, David, inside of Rad Studio XE, the developers are now going to have Delphi, C++ Builder, Delphi Prism, and Rad PHP. That'll allow them to build cross-platform web applications seamlessly. And let me give you an example of how I can do the exact same thing in each IDE. With the work we've done with Rad Studio XE, it's really exciting to see all of the IDEs work as one. And what I mean by that is that we basically follow the same design and development process for each of the products. So here I'm looking at a C++ project, and I have the project, and I have the source code behind it, and it works just like what you would expect. If I bring up a Delphi project, it looks the exact same. I drag the components, I work with the components. When I double-click on the member, I have the exact same code. 
when I go into Delphi Prism, it's the exact same thing. I'm using WPF here. I could use Silverlight, but it's the exact same process. If I double click on my button, it'll take me into the source code. And notice the source code, even though I'm doing it in .NET, looks the exact same. What I'm really excited about is the new RAD PHP that's included inside of RAD Studio. This is going to be really exciting for a lot of people because it is built with Delphi. It's extremely fast. It's not your a typical PHP editor with just text editor. This has a full component library. It actually has a full debugger. It has a full profiler. It works like Delphi. It acts like Delphi, but the language is PHP. Let me give you a quick example. Here we have the membership editor, just like we did in some of the other projects. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up a little bit, and I can move it. Notice it has the guidelines for lining things up, so I can make sure that everything is lined up correctly. I can also open it up and make it look a little bit stronger that way. When I'm done with this, I can go ahead and go in and add some code. So I can go into events, I can go into my button click, and then I can just put in the regular PHP. And as you can see, it has all of the things you expect, the help insight, the error insight, you name it, all of those key tools are in there. So if I come into here, notice my error insight sets up and works just like you would expect it to. Now I'm ready to go ahead and run this. So when I go ahead and run it, what this will do is this will basically kick off the application just like you would expect. So I'm going to come in here and type in the word Mike and hit Add Member. What it's going to do is going to go out to the server and it's going to add that back in and you'll see that it's updated in my list box. This is 100% PHP. This is cross-platform PHP. Now I can come back into my PHP designer and then the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and put a breakpoint on here. Notice that we've now added a breakpoint. It looks just like it does in Delphi. Now I'm going to go ahead and kick this off and what we're going to want to do is this is going to stop so we'll notice that it's going to come right back in like before so now I'm going to come into here and I'm going to put in the word Mike we're going to go ahead and add the member and notice that we stopped right on our breakpoint our local variables are the same everything looks the same and we can actually expand it out so it's really exciting to have this type of capability and we're going to be showing more of the PHP in future previews so I'm really excited about this and what you can do with this product Building well-designed objects leads to better quality applications. Rad Studio has UML and pattern support integrated into the IDE. Mike, what has been added for modeling in Rad Studio XE? Well, in Rad Studio XE, we now have the ability to do ancestry diagrams and also sequence diagrams. Let me give you a quick example of how this can help you get your job done quicker. Some of the really interesting productivity areas that we've enhanced inside of Rad Studio XE is with regards to modeling and understanding of your code. Let's go in here to this flow panel demo and I'm going to go ahead and turn on modeling. I'll open this up and let's go ahead and show open on diagram. As we can see we have this main unit inside of here and as I can also tell that it's extended from T form. If I come in and click on the T forms I can either add the T form or as an ancestry diagram or I can show the entire ancestry back to T object. So I may want to just come in here and look at T form so I can come in and say add to object. Notice that this is extended from T custom form and if I wanted to I could extend it from there or I could extend it to all of the ancestries. So one of the great things about it now is that if you have a high level object you can see the entire hierarchy. What we try to do with Delphi is to try to minimize the exposure of all the objects to clean up your environment, but now we give you the ability to continue to drill into your code and drill into the model for better understanding and relationships. The other thing we've added into the product is something called generate sequence diagrams. Now generate sequence diagrams help you understand the code because it visually interprets what happens inside of a method. So you can quickly come out and let's say we're going to go to this create controls. I can right mouse click on any method inside of the environment and I can say generate sequence diagram. What it does is it then goes out and finds all the different types of components. When I see all of them, I can set my parameters. And then when I'm ready to display my sequence diagram, I can go ahead and hit the OK button. What this is going to do is reverse engineer, and you can see it walks through the code automatically showing me which objects and which messages are being passed back and forth. Where this really becomes important is when you have complex methods that are hard to follow in code, you can now visually look at them and get a better understanding from it. Thanks, Mike, for previewing what's new in Red Studio XE for managing source code, the ID and tool chain, and object modeling. You're welcome, David. Red Studio XE is the real world solution for your native, managed, and web application development. If you can dream it, you can build it with Red Studio XE.